fast, focused, and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of October 22, Tuesday. I'm Riza Diaz. Jump-starting today's rush with the former PNP chief Oscar Albayalde now accused of a number of crimes by his own subordinates at the CIDG. He's now facing complaints along with the 13 so-called ninja cops, which is a little over two weeks ahead of his retirement. Dil de Vera has the report. After being given five days by the Justice Department to submit additional evidence, the PNP CIDG has filed its amended complaint against the 13 so-called ninja cops. The stark difference in the revised charge, the inclusion of former PNP chief Oscar Albayalde. The former top cop faces raps for four complaints, including a violation of Section 27 of the Dangerous Drugs Act for cover-up and non-declaration of the true quantity of illegal drugs seized, and Section 3 of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practice has act for interfering with the case of the 13 rogue policemen and for failing to open an investigation when he was the police provincial director of Pampanga. But the PNP CIDG says they still lack strong evidence to prove Albayalde's involvement. There is no strong uh, single evidence. No? Yung uh, circumstances lang naman ng... Uh, that will show that uh, he is probably uh, liable. Probably liable. Mm -hmm. Sa kasama rin dun sa, of course, yung mga admissions sa Senate uh, investigation. Albayalde was added to the list of respondents upon the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee's recommendation. Albayalde seems to welcome the investigation as he will be given due process. The PNP also dismissed three of the 13 so-called ninja cops, but this time over an anomalous drug operation in Antipolo Rizal last May. They are Police Master Sergeant Donald Roque, Police Master Sergeant Romel Vital, and Police Corporal Romeo Encarnacion Guerrero Jr. But the three may still file for an appeal. Part ng procedural due process, no? that uh, pagkatapos ng rule ko na dismissal, which also I have that power, no? I have the disciplinary authority of a chief PNP to discipline our men. No? After that, uh, it will be the notice will be served to them, and they will have the right to file out actually a motion of reconsideration. No? After its denial, then they can go to the usual uh, appeal mechanism of administrative cases. For News 5, Dale DeVera, we are One News. Amid the Ninja Cops controversy, the PNP has implemented an overhaul within its ranks. The agency says the order for a revamp came from no less than President Duterte. Patricia Mangune has the details. There's a changing of the guards at the PNP leadership, and it's massive. PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Archie Francis Gamboa, implemented a major reshuffle at the organization, effective October 20, following the retirement of top officials, including Lieutenant General Fernando Mendez, who previously served as chief for administration. The revamp also comes after the resignation last week of PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde, who has been dragged into the Ninja Cops controversy. The major revamp affects 21 officials, including Mariel Magawai, who has been named as director for the PNP's Directorate for Intelligence. Meanwhile, Amador Corpus has been named as Human Resource and Doctrine Development Director, while Joel Napoleon Coronel is now the acting director of the CIDG. There are also new appointments in regional offices, including Leonardo Cesneros for Central Luzon. The Manila Police District is getting a new district director in the person of Bernabe Balba. The PNP Drug Enforcement Group will be headed by Acting Director Romeo Caramat, while Arnel Escobal is the new Acting Director of the Aviation Security Group. Lieutenant General Gamboa said the revamp was ordered by no less than President Duterte himself. The same question that was asked to me by people who were affected of the reshuffle. We admit that this is a directive from the president. So I convened the directorial staff and uh, a few national separate units together with the command group last Saturday. So sabi ko sa kanila, we have a directive, we have to have a revamp, what would be the basis? So it's not only performance because true. No, maraming gumawa ng uh, maganda naman yung kanilang mga accomplishment. Kung titingnan mo nga yung rating, ang pinakamababang region is 84%. Kung ordinary yung grading system, passing, no? Marami but probably to introduce uh, new leadership, no? Sa sinabi ko na uh, fresh ideas, no?
But Gamboa explained that the new officials will serve a probationary period for three months. Then, their performance will be reviewed afterwards. All promotions are also put on hold. They respect the decision of the officer in charge. Rest assured, yun ang inassure ng lahat. Uh, okay, nag na tayo, ilabas niyo yung mga sa loobin niyo. Pero pagkatapos nito, tapos na to. And ultimately, we respect the decision of the officer in charge and we move forward. A part of the Na National Police Commission uh, resolution says that I have the power to designate and relieve senior officers from different units. Gamboa reminded the new officials to veer away from possible corrupt practices as he signed a memorandum circular that strengthens internal cleansing in the PNP ranks. Karamihan nagsasabi na hindi ako marunong magalit. Maaring mahaba ang aking pasensya. Pero pagdating sa trabaho at kung ano yung naayon sa alam kong tama, huwag niyo akong subukan. And that is not a threat but a cautionary statement to those who will test my patience. Gamboa said police officials need to shape up following the controversy involving the 13 Pampanga cops who are implicated for supposedly recycling seized narcotics from a drug bust in 2013. For News 5, Patricia Mangune, We Are One News. Moving on now to other headlines. After the continued drop in palay prices, some local farmers trooped to Mendiola to condemn the president for signing the rice tariffication law. Shala Francisco with the story. A winged creature bringing blight to the farming industry. This is the effigy of President Duterte, which farmers and other groups burned at a rally in Mendiola. They're still protesting the passage of the rice tariffication law. Marjorie from Nueva Ecija joined the demonstrations. She says despite the 2 peso increase of palay prices, she keeps on selling her produce at a loss. Her 60,000 earning last year has whittled down to 20,000 pesos this year. Napakapababa mo ma'am dahil kasi yung mga inutang namin mga gamit sa pagsasaka, hindi na po kami makabayad po ma'am. The government is holding back on imposing higher tariffs on rice imports this harvest season to address the oversupply of rice due to the surge in imports. Instead, a one-time 5,000 peso cash assistance will be handed out for 600,000 farmers. So itong mga ginagawa niya ay mas tindi yung malawak ang kagutuman at pagkapangkarotin. The Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food warns the government of possible lawsuits. Under Section 10 of the Rice Tarification Law, the government shall impose a special safeguard duty to protect the industry from sudden or extreme price fluctuations. A deliberate yung refusal nila to, to implement the law in favor of the farmers. Isn't that a form of graft? The refusal to do your duty for the farmers? And in, in effect, you're favoring the importers? But the DA says no law was violated. There's no violation. I don't think that's their own that's thinking not. only. The best way to intervene now is to <coughs> give cash assistance. That. For now, they are waiting for the joint resolution of the Senate and the House to allow the social welfare development to give beneficiaries rice instead of cash for its rice subsidy program. Shaila Francisco, we are One News. Here's a quick part of today's biggest stories. After meeting Indian President Ram Nath Kovind, President Duterte is visiting the land of the rising sun to attend to the crowning of a new Japanese emperor, Naruhito. Duterte joins the other world leaders and dignitaries in the crowning ceremony today. He's also invited to two banquets hosted by the new emperor and a Japanese prime minister, Shinzo Abe. It's just a quick visit to Japan with the president expected to be back in Manila on Thursday. Palas says Duterte even brought with him only a small delegation, although it was not disclosed who exactly are with him. One Miralco Foundation continues its One for Trees advocacy with employees and volunteers planting over 750 endemic trees saplings in the Sierra Madre this month. Now, this was done to support the efforts of the Green Earth Foundation to improve eco farming in the area. It also aims to protect and preserve forest and watersheds, as well as promote green social enterprise and sustainable environmentalism. Miralco employees and volunteers kicked this project off in September 
September by planting 2,000 seedlings at the Green Earth Heritage Farm. They also traveled to La Iban Trail in Tanay Rizal earlier this month to plant 500 tree saplings of Guyabano and Langka. Signal Entertainment and Epic Media's Babae at Baril bagged several awards at the recently concluded 2019 Q Cinema International Film Festival. The move or the movie snagged the Gender Sensitive Sensitivity Award thanks to Janine Gutierrez playing the lead role as a vengeful woman who finally got a chance to fight back. Gutierrez won Best Actress for her performance while Ray Red was awarded the Best Director. Let's fast break now to Sports Rush. The international football governing body dropped by the Philippines to help boost the sport's popularity among Filipinos. Bay Escudero with the story. We are here at Sofitel Philippine Plaza to get to know more about the visit of the man representing the world's biggest sport. He is none other than FIFA president himself, Gianni Infantino. The head of football around the world visits the Philippines to aid the Philippine Football Federation in its efforts to grow the sport. Football, which lags behind in popularity compared to basketball, volleyball, and boxing in the country, is still developing. FIFA aims to boost that development by supporting the Philippine Football Federation in their efforts concerning grassroots football, women's football, and football infrastructures. It is a that the local football governing body welcomes with open arms. We have plans uh, for a new headquarters of the Federation in Cremona. Uh, uh, we have been working, uh, and the Federation has done a great job in this respect, in uh, um, creating new competitions for boys and for girls, for youth. Bea Escudero, we are One News. And here are the biggest stories from the dailies. The United Nations sees the number of Filipinos affected by HIV hitting at least 200,000 by 2025. That's if the government fails to implement drastic measures to curb the cases. The Philippines Star reports that according to the UN body, two of three um, people infected by HIV in the country are age 15 to 24. This would account for 19,000 new cases by 2022. In transportation, just a bit more waiting for South people. The Light Rail Manila Corporation says 90% of the right of way for phase one of the LRT1 Cavite extension has been acquired. The LRT1 operator tells Business World that as soon as the right of way issues are resolved, the 65 billion peso extension project can finally push through with its construction. The phase one of the project consists of five stations between Redemptoris in Baclaran and Dr. A. Santos in uh, Paranaque. And this from Pangmasa. The parents of Binibining Pilipinas Grand International 2019 Samantha Law admitted that they secured a fake passport for her through a fixer. That's according to Binibining Pilipinas Charities Incorporated following the DFA's statement saying they do not have the name on their database. The pageant's management also denied Samantha's allegations that they did not, that they did not do anything to help her. The BPCI explained that they wanted to assist um, Law immediately but claim that neither Law nor her family reached out to them. Law surfaced in Caracas, Venezuela on a Saturday, ending the speculations that she's gone missing last week. And that's how today is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Riza Diaz. We are One News.